Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond, and in this video I'll be taking a look at Flick of Faith, published by Awaken Realms Light. And as the title suggests, this is a flicking dexterity game that uses discs on a mat that comes with the game. It's a game for 2 to 4 players, ages 8 and up, plays in about 30 to 40 minutes. So I'll just open up the box and show you what you get with this game. I'll set up a game and explain the rules, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Alright, so let's first take a look at the box of Flick of Faith. The title is only on the sides, not at the front, which is kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it does have some really lovely artwork of the gods playing the game on the table in the clouds. Pretty cool. It says Playmat Inside on this sticker here. So we got Flick of Faith on all the sides there. And on the back you can see the contents and sh a short explanation of how to play the game. It's for ages 8 and up, 2 to 4 players, plays in about half an hour to 40 minutes. So, let's open up the box. And there we go. So inside the box is first of all a little leaflet with the game rules so let's take a look at that it's just a small leaflet it tells you all the components and a glossary the setup the flow of the game and the different phases the council phase the mission phase and the worship phase and the end of the game that's basically it so it's very easy short rules so that should be easy to learn and explain then we have some sticker sheets uh, with these uh, nice illustrations that go on the discs All right so we'll stick those on later and two more two more factions then we have some interesting looking tokens <laughs> we have a big hand a temple, some coins, a uh, pit, a large heart, and this uh, whirlwind with a sheep. <laughs> Double-sided. And we have all these coins. Alright, so I'll push those out in a bit. Then we have some cards here, so let me just take a look at those. Okay, so we have several effects that lasts until the end of the game so that's uh, a different effect that you can choose to play with all right so there's quite a lot of these so that will make your game different every time and we have four of these uh, reference cards with the game order and important game turns on the back that you can hand out to all the players so that's nice those are the cards then we have here these uh, player boards, so let's open that up as well. Just in a little plastic baggie there. So we got Anubis, the Egyptian god, and Ra. So that's nice, you can choose two different gods for each faction. Here we have Dagda and Morrigan. Cool, I love the illustrations, very colorful, very nice. Uh, Freya and Tyr. And here is Themis and Zeus. Cool, so those are the four characters you can play, and I believe this is supposed to be over there. All right, so that goes there. And then we have a large bag of wooden discs that need to be stickered of course so we have big ones and smaller ones and thinner ones so I'll just uh, take those out there's uh, three colors and I'll put some stickers on them no is that actually that's blue and purple so there's four colors I was wondering because you know four players but the purple and the blue do look like they uh, look a lot, look a lot alike. <laughs> yeah, that is indeed 
quite hard to make out. There is a difference, but you know, this could have been lighter blue or this could have been more pinkish perhaps to make the color stand out better because the, the green and the yellow work fine. You know, why not take red instead of purple? So yeah, that might be a little issue to colorblind people or, you know, if you're just playing in a, in a darker room because you need lots of light to make uh, the, uh, you know, to see the difference. All right, so then the game does come with a game mat, which is pretty cool. It's in the box. That's, that's of course, why the box is so long. And here you have the, uh, well, the four areas where the gods uh, hail from. And this is your player board. All right, let's set up a game. To set up a game of Flick of Faith, you take the map and you put it in the center of the table in such a way that all players can easily access one of the four corners of this map. Take all of the components and put them within easy reach. These are the victory points. This is the reserve pool. These are the law cards. You shuffle those and put them also next to the map. Every player can take one of these reference cards, which has the game order and important game terms on it. These are some tokens that also get used by certain gods and certain law cards. These are your prophets. These are Templars, which only uh, are used with a certain law card as well. And those are your temples. Every player takes one of these God ability cards and you can randomly deal them out or you can choose them and players can choose which side to play and all of these God gods have different abilities. Some gods also have a special token which is indicated on their card. So this one has the Hand of God token. Um, Freya here has the Heart token. Ra gets the Sphinx, which is a bigger profit, uh, so it's uh, heavier when you flick it. And uh, that is it. So those extra tokens are also dealt out to the players who selected those gods. Each player takes five profits in a two or four player game, but in a three player game, you take six profits. Next, all players pick one of their profits, put it in their corner and flick it towards the center of the map. And the player who got closest to the navel of the world here in the center uh, gets the first player token. Return your profits to your side of the map and now you're ready to play. Let's explain the rules. Now the game lasts for several rounds depending on the number of players. In a two or four player game you play four rounds or generations as they are called and in a three player game you play three rounds and each round has three phases. First of all there's the council phase in which all players vote for one of the law cards. So you draw two of those law cards and you put them on the table and people vote which of those cards they want to use and they all have different kinds of rules that change up the game a bit. Then there's the mission phase where every player starting with the player with the first player marker will flick one of their profits onto the map and stuff happens, I'll get to that later. And then finally there's the worship phase in which victory points are counted and you take points and then you repeat the process and you pass on your first player token to the next player on your left. But before I go into detail of all those phases, there's a couple of uh, terms I need to explain. So the player's corner is the cloud space over here, bordered in white. So you can start flicking from any spot within this border on this cloud on your end of the map. All the white lines are considered borders. So these are the borders of the islands. This is the border of the city on that island. And this is the border of the navel of the world. Every player has their own pool of profits, which are these small discs, and you can flick them on the map. And every player also has four temples, which are very large uh, tokens as well that you will also be placing on the map. And once placed on the map, they stay on the map even between rounds. If a player has at least one of their prophets or temples on an island, that means they have presence on that island. Everything outside of the island borders or the naval borders is considered to be the sea. 
A player has domination on an island if their total sum of profits and temples is more than each other player's total sum, so majority of your tokens on an island. If there's a tie, no one has domination, but you still have presence on that island. The reserve pool is this token and all profits which are somehow temporarily removed from the game are placed on that token. During the worship phase, all of the profits on the reserve pool are returned to their respective owners. There are certain law cards that add new tokens to the game, such as the tornado over here, which uh, uses this, this tornado token. You place it on the map near the navel or on the navel, and it will have an effect on the game. Uh, Templars, uh, in this case you replace two of your profit discs with Templars, which are these discs over here, and they are bigger, but still considered uh, profits. And the King Ape puts the King Ape token into play as well. All of the player cards also have special abilities. So for example, Ra here gives you the Sphinx instead of one regular profit. So it is still considered to be a profit, it's just a lot bigger and heavier. So that will give you an advantage when flicking. And on the other side of this car is Anubis. And he says for each generation, the first time one of your profits goes to the reserve pool, you flick that profit from your corner right after the active player's turn. So that's pretty cool as well. Themis here says you may resolve a tie in the council phase when you're voting for the uh, law cards over there. And you may win one tie in the worship phase when you're checking for victory points, whether you have domination or not. Zeus uh, says when building a temple, you may choose any island you want. I'll explain how to place temples in a bit. Tyr here says that you may flick your profit with your weaker hand. And if you do, and that profit lands on an island, flick that profit a second time using the same hand. Freya here has the heart token. And at the beginning of the worship phase, drop the heart token from at least two centimeters above the map. And if the heart rests on at least one of your profits and at least one of your opponent's profits, then all such opponent's profits count both for you and their owners when computing presence and domination. That's pretty cool as well. Dagda has the hand of God token uh, over there. And you may use the Hand of God token during your turn in the mission phase by holding it uh, the way its fingertips touches the map and no other components while you are flicking. So you can use it as sort of a, a barrier to guide your, your uh, profits. And then finally, there's Morgan who says at the end of your turn, place opponents' off-map profits. So usually they would go to the reserve pool, but now they go to this card and you get three victory points in the worship phase if you have at least two profits on your card. So that only happens during your own turn, but that's pretty cool as well. So all of these gods have different abilities. So each round or generation starts with the council phase. So then you draw two cards, you put one on top and one on the bottom. So you have the upper card and the lower card Make sure every player has read these laws and then all players hold their hands with their thumbs out horizontally and you count to three and then all players either vote up for the upper card or down for the lower card and the majority wins. And in case of a tie, you take both cards, you shuffle them and you randomly pick one and that will be the law card for that round. These cards will add an extra effect to the game, an extra rule, if you will. And these effects remain active as long as indicated on the card. And like I said earlier, sometimes they will add additional tokens to the game. Next is the mission phase, where every player gets a chance to flick one of their profits, starting with the first player. So you take one of your profits, place it anywhere within your corner, inside the borders and then you flick that uh, token and after you flick the token you check for several things to happen so first of all if your profit hit one of these cities or is inside one of those cities or partially inside you may remove that profit into the reserve pool take a temple and place it anywhere on that island doesn't have to be in the city you can place this anywhere 
if you manage to flick one of your profits into the navel of the world, or maybe by flicking uh, your profit, you pushed one of the others there, or maybe there are multiple players touching uh, the navel, and all of those profits are removed into the reserve pool, and each owner gets one victory point per profit removed. Plus, they also get one victory point for each island where they have presence. So in this case, this player had presence here, got one removed, so that would be an extra victory point. So later in the game, when you have more presence on islands, it really pays to try and get your profit into the navel. Then all the profits that were flicked or pushed out of the entire map, they are also put into the reserve pool. And finally, any temples that were pushed outside of an island's borders are also returned to that player. And that's the end of the first player's turn. Then the second player takes a turn, the third and the fourth. And you repeat this until all the players have flicked all of their profits and there are no more profits left to flick. And then it's time for the third and final phase, the worship phase, and you get to gather victory points. Firstly, for having presence, you get one victory point for every island where you have at least one prophet or one temple. So this would mean two victory points. You score points for having domination. So for each island where you have a presence and domination, you get two additional victory points. And in case of a tie, no one gets extra victory points for domination. And after you've decided all of those victory points, every player takes back all of their profits, but you leave temples on the map where they are. The player with the first player token passes it on to the player on their left. Remove all law cards that no longer have any effect on the game. And then you start a new round by once again drawing two cards, doing the vote and then everybody starts flicking their profits again. You score and the game ends after the number of rounds, according to the number of players, have ended. And of course, after the last round, the player with the most victory points is the winner. And if there is a tie, then the winner is the player with the most temples on the map. If there's still a tie, players once again take uh, one of their profits and try to flick it as close to the navel of the world and the player who gets closest wins the tie. And that's everything you need to know on how to play Flick of Faith. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Flick of Faith by Awaken Realms Light. First of all, let me start with the presentation. Uh, I really like the fact that they give you a uh, actual play mat with the game. Of course, you need those kind of things with uh, flicking games and dexterity games like this, where you're flicking discs over the map. And uh, this just works very well. So that's pretty cool. It's a very nice mat. It has stitched edges. It has very vibrant colors printed on it. Uh, it is pretty big though it's not too big but this means that of course the box also needs to be as wide as the mat so this is a pretty big box it's not very convenient to store on your shelf so you'll need to find uh, a place for that but otherwise uh, it's uh, presented very very well you get all of these wooden discs the big ones and the small ones you get stickers for each and every one of them with uh, their own artwork so that's pretty cool as well I do wish they would have chosen a different color for either the blue or the purple or maybe made the blue a lot lighter because they're quite hard to tell apart. The purple and the dark blue is very much alike. Now you do get the stickers on them so they are um, easily to make out from those stickers but it would have been better had the colors been uh, more different. I like uh, the cards, they are of a decent thickness, they have a linen finish, very vibrant colors as well. All of the cards have the same finish and have the same thickness, so that's uh, good quality. Uh, one thing I don't really like about these law cards is that all of them have this kind of line art. And I get why they want line art, because these are basically stone tablets with the, the gods' laws on them. But if you look closely at this artwork, it's not just the line art, it's almost like they're sketched. They're sketches and you can actually see the layer of thin lines and circles uh, underneath the line drawing. It's like they forgot to turn off that layer somehow. So it would have been nice if those line drawings had been 
uh, cleaner and finished. They kind of look unfinished to me. So that's a, a minor nitpick I have with just the law cards. All the other art is fantastic. It's, it's very colorful and uh, very well done indeed. The theme is also pretty fun. You're, you're basically gods sending out your prophets into the world, trying to get uh, presence and uh, domination majority on these four islands. Uh, you can score extra points by going to the navel of the world. You can try and bump other prophets off of the island so they end up in the sea and they don't score points at all. You can even try and bump temples off of islands so they get removed as well. And uh, there are some special rules in these, uh, uh, these law cards that make the game very interesting. So that brings me to the gameplay. Um, the game itself is quite simple. You just flick your profits, try to get on the islands, try to get domination here and there, try to get those temples on by reaching these city uh, circles on the islands. And that's all pretty cool and very simple and you just take some dexterity. But these law cards, they really mix up the game. You get two law cards every round, then you have your players vote which one to uh, put into play, and then all kinds of new stuff happens. There's even a card in there that makes it real time, so that all four players take their turn simultaneously, and the first player to have flicked all of his profits shouts stop and then everybody has to stop so you better be fast and that makes it very hectic there's a lot of randomness here but it does come down to dexterity so in that regard it does it very well even with all of those weird uh, new laws that can happen during the game i think just think that is a lot of fun and you even get all these extra tokens and even extra discs that only are used with some of the gods or some of these cards. I mean, all of those uh, Templar discs, they, they're only for one of those law cards, but you get eight of them, two for each player, which is pretty cool. So that they, you know, they put all this effort in all of those components just to have this one extra law. So uh, all in all, I think there's uh, plenty of gameplay in this game for you know a simple uh, filler dexterity game uh, to keep it interesting so i like that very much as well the replayability is pretty high because it's a fast game you're flicking discs and you're taking turns and you're scoring points and then after you know four or three rounds depending on the number of players you likely want to play this again because it's a lot of fun and it's really fast and it's just what's what's not to like about flicking discs on a, a smooth mat. It's just so cool. And even if you have the bigger ones, you know, like these, you can try out and just flick out some other discs and see what happens. And try not to flick your own uh, profits into the sea. So there's this is just a lot of fun. I really like uh, this game. And so replayability for me at least is pretty high. I want to play this again and again. Uh, but your miles may vary, of course, uh, depending on what kind of player you are. There is some language dependency, sadly. Most of the game is just uh, language independent because you're just flicking discs. But all of the gods have their own special ability written on them in text, of course. And, of course, all of these law cards require you to read what's on them. So you do need to have a grasp of the English language. So sadly the game is language dependent so unless you have one player in the group at least who perfectly understands english to explain all these laws and these gods to the other players then you can play this with uh, any nationality but you do need to understand english so all in all i really enjoyed playing this and i'd like to thank awaken realms for handing me one of these copies to review at spiel uh, last year uh, I really enjoyed playing it, and so did the people I played this with, so I'm giving it a huge thumbs up uh, from me. So that was a Flick of Faith. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up as well. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven. Mm -hmm.